Blog Talk Radio. Hello, and welcome to my show. This is Bart Smythe, the Modern Day Shaman. And welcome to my show. This is Hello, and welcome to my show. This is Bart Smythe, the Modern Day Shaman. Welcome everyone to the Modern Day Shaman with your special host, Bart Smite and Denise Black. And here is the Modern Day Shaman, Bart Smite. Bart? Thank you very much. Thank you, Deanne. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Denise. Looking forward to a very nice show tonight. Uh, the Modern Day Shaman, where we're... Uh, focus is to empower, bring not only the work that I do and, and others that are out there on the cutting edge today, and tonight we have a very interesting gentleman, uh, Dennis Parker, who's a clinical hypnotherapist and a member of the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners, and he's got a school where he teaches what he does. And he's got a great book uh, called Spiritual Mind Management. And he'll be joining us tonight. And Denise, are you with us? I'm here. All right. From Windy, Las here, Vegas. Vegas. Okay, Dennis, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you for coming on our show tonight. Oh, and, thanks for uh, having me. Yeah, kind of nice. You're, you're up in Utah. Where, you're in Farmington, Utah, huh? Yeah, the school's in Farmington, yes. Nice country. It is. It's beautiful, especially this time of year. The mountains are all turning green again. Same here in Sweden. <laughs> I imagine you, you guys have a nice long winter there, too. Well, we do. It's still good to have over. Well, I'm excited to talk to you tonight, Dennis. Uh, we're in the same business on some levels, and... Uh, what I've read about what you've done, we've had a brief conversation. I'm looking, uh, I'm sure our uh, listeners are going to get a lot out of this, and, and hopefully you'll get some uh, business for your school. So I, I'd like to let you go ahead and, and give a brief introduction to yourself and uh, how you got started and your path to coming and seeing how well hypnosis can work, actually. Okay, um, how I became a hypnotherapist is in a full-length version. It's on my school website, uh, certifiedhypnotherapytrainingschool.com. If you go to the Meet Our Team tab and you go down to my name, there's a link there to the uh, full story of, of how I got into this. And I wrote it in such a way that people can also understand some of the benefits of hypnotherapy and actually how it works. But what happened to me was that about 25 years ago, I was just becoming more and more angry. I, I called myself an angeraholic. And at that time in my life, I was in commissioned cells. And life wasn't going so good because I found out, you know, people didn't need to really talk to an angry, irritable, ticked-off salesman, you know. <laughs> and so, 
I was I was struggling in my business and at home we had a large family which was also stressful. We had eleven kids at home at the time and and uh, we've raised a large family and so on and with all the family stresses and all the pressures and so on. Uh, being an angry father also didn't bode well for me at home either. So eventually I started to look for some help and uh, I ended up um, in the office of a hypnotherapist. And that experience uh, literally changed my life. I mean, uh, I didn't know uh, why I was angry. I had been carrying all of this emotional content, as I call it now, all this anger and rage with me for years but really had no idea why and didn't understand um, how that could have actually developed in me. But what happens in hypnosis or trance is that it gives us access to the subconscious mind. And in the subconscious mind, those functions are imaginations, memories, and emotions. And so we can access that information at that subconscious level that normally is not available to us as we're conscious. So our conscious mind, we do analytical, logical thinking and so on. But there's this barrier filter, if you will, between the two minds that we call the critical faculty or sometimes the critical factor. Right. And that critical factor is the area of our belief systems. And once we allow a thought to get through that critical factor filter into the subconscious, the process is, is that that thought will then first hit our imaginations, and we can amplify any thought from zero to 2,500 times. So we can make any little thought a really big deal, and we know we have those terms in society when people do that regularly. We say, well, they always make mountains out of molehills. You know, we have descriptions for all this naturally that we verbalize. But the next right. thing it does is that as it goes through the imaginations, then it goes into our memories. And in our memories, what we do is we attempt to justify, validate, and defend whatever belief we've accepted for ourselves there because nobody wants to be wrong. You don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be wrong. So we are then do a search, if you will, in our memories for those experiences and back up and validate where we can justify and defend the belief we've chosen. However much imaginary amplification we've added to the thought, <coughs> and how much justifying, validating data we can pull up, that's what generates the amount of emotions or feelings that the person feels about that thought or that experience. And in that imaginary content, the higher the imagination level, and again, we say it can go from zero to 2,500 times, the more the amplification goes up, so does the emotions. And the more extreme the emotions, the more extreme the behaviors. And so when this hypnotherapist uh, hypnotized me, and uh, I ended up going back to this experience that I had, again, I had no idea it was even there. But the great thing about hypnotherapy is, and what we do, is that we know that in the subconscious, every thought, every touch, every smell, every sensory perception that all of us have had from birth until now is all still in our subconscious. Every conversation, every word, everything is there and can be accessed through these processes. So the beauty of it is, is that we don't have to ask somebody a test of 100 questions and if they answer 25 of them, them this way it means that or 35 of them that way means something else. We can simply induce the right level of trance and there are basically six observable levels of hypnosis or trance. And one, okay. mistake, that most, one mistake that most people make is that they, they think that hypnosis is a, is a specific state of mind or something. It's not. It's a very general term that covers a, a wide range of levels that our mind goes in and out of. So this lady, this hypnotist that I went to, uh, hypnotized me, introduced me into the fourth level of trance down, which we call catalepsy. And there's a video on my school library, again, at certifiedhypnotherapytrainingschool.com. There's a number of free videos there. But one of them is called The Truth About Hypnosis or Trance, and it will show somebody going through those six trance states and explain all of those different trance levels and so on. But she had me go into this fourth level of trance, which I didn't understand at the time because this was my first experience and exposure to it. And by prompting me with the right questions as to why I was so angry, <clears throat> in my subconscious mind it brought up an experience 
that I had had with my mother years earlier, some 18 years earlier, that had been building and compounding in a conversation around an experience that we had that was traumatic for me. My sister was killed when she was 18 and I was 16. And uh, this conversation was around that. And I won't say any more about it because I don't want to ruin the story if somebody wants to actually take the time to go read it. Of course. But I was, I was able to vend off and clear out all of that anger and all of that angst and depression and all those things that I had been carrying with me for years. And so then I went back and I did six or eight sessions of, of hypnotherapy with this lady and cleared up all kinds of things in my life and it totally changed my life. From that point on, my sales career went up, my children loved me better, my wife who had always tolerated me actually seemed to appreciate me again. And uh, it was just a great experience in my life and then I started to pursue it and became a hypnotherapist, went to school, did the training and now I have a school where I still teach people to do what I learned how to do back then. The only thing that we do now is that we've evolved it over the last 25 years into uh, higher levels, if you will, or forms of hypnotherapy that we do now that we call spiritual mind management. And uh, I don't know if you have some questions about that or if you want me to just keep going. <laughs> well, yeah, well, first off, uh, I think that, you know, what you're doing and what you're sharing with the audience is, you know, so important to share because anger especially for men, it's kind of like an accepted emotion and can get overlooked. And it's, it seems like you've, uh, you know, you found something that could be of great service to, to uh, many people out there that have this situation. So congratulations on that. And then, yeah, I'm curious about your, your uh, book, please. Go ahead. And your uh, yeah. spiritual mind management. Yeah. Yeah, I would that, that I, I would uh, say a couple more things about that. What I what I've learned is is that we don't have to live with negative emotions. No, that there's there's a root cause to all of them, and when we finally are able to get access through the filter, if you will, into the subconscious, we can actually go into the subconscious mind and correct all of the incongruent thinking errors, as we call it, at that level of our mind. Uh, consciously, we all know that we ought to be doing, you know, all the right things. Consciously, we all think about the same. We all know we ought to eat better, sleep longer, exercise more, you know. We all know that there's all these things we ought to be doing. That's not where our problems are. Our problems really reside in a disconnected thinking and the subconscious mind, you know, the difference in beliefs at that level versus consciousness. So when right. we have incongruent thinking in our subconscious mind, uh, that sets up opposing forces within us. We want to move forward in life, but we hesitate. We we really like to go achieve this goal or do this thing, but we're in, we're inhibited. And so once we can go in and clear out those things in the subconscious, like my anger issue and the things that you read in the story, once the anger's gone, once the hate's gone, once the fear's gone, uh, once the anxiety's gone. Now people just move forward to their goals at such a rapid rate, and they go out and accomplish and achieve great things that they never even thought they could. And it just changes, uh, changes lives. But back to the book. Um, the book is really about a concept that I did learn in, in uh, hypnotherapy school some 20, almost 25 years ago now. And that concept is, is that there's a part of us in our mind, and I'm talking about not the brain because... Everybody wants to talk about the brain, but what we've learned is there's a part of us, and the only way we can describe it is, is that, you know, people always say, well, you know, what happens to us when we die? And most everybody will concede that we have a spirit or there's some part of us that animates us that leaves when we die. And that's why the body lays there inanimate. Well, within that part that animates us, and I'll just call it our spirit for the sake of the conversation, Inside of our spirit, there is a part of our spirit that actually manages and runs the spirit, but it also runs and manages the brain. And what we've learned to do is that through trance, uh, a person who has done their work, as we call it, meaning they've gone in and they've cleared out the fixations that have bothered them from the past, so like my sister's death, 
and other issues that I had, as those were cleared up, what happens is our mind gets clear and freer. And in a clear and free mind, you can actually feel a part of your spiritual mind actually move inside your mind, and it actually moves from place to place. And that is what we're actually thinking with. So a person who is clear and free-minded becomes consciously aware that there's this part of us inside of us that is moving from place to place in our spiritual mind, and that is what's directing the brain. And so people can learn and be taught how to move that intentionally and adjust their imaginations. Uh, maybe they have a, a 2,500 negative imagination that's totally inhibiting them. People can be taught how to adjust that negative imagination, bring it back into balance. And now they no longer feel negative about life or themselves or other things, and it's almost instantaneous. It's amazing. So it's wow. the new mental. Yeah, it is. It's incredible. <laughs> and there's a video, again, on the school site that's called Spiritual Mind Management, and it's a full-length video. We're trying to take this to the world, so to speak, now and help as many people as we can. And, and uh, it's almost like a two-and-a-half-hour video. The first part of it's a little propaganda about me and school and stuff. But if you get past that, uh, there's about two hours that actually explain this whole process and how it works. And you'll see people there doing it and uh, full explanation of how all this works as well as, as the book that people can get and read. And the book is on Amazon, and you can get it as a hard copy or a Kindle version off of Amazon.com. Spiritual so Mind you, Management. So, Dennis, if you if you buy this book, it teaches you the process so you can do it at home? It does, yeah. Okay. And, and most, people, most people, though, are going to need a little help because uh, depending on their age and and so on. You know, most people have a half a dozen to a dozen things that have still fixated them, as I call it, where their intelligence, this part of them that moves within their mind, actually gets stuck or fixated. So that experience with my sister was a fixation for me. I was stuck there, so to speak. And in my imagination, over the years, I kept amplifying that. And I was getting worse and worse in my anger, if you will. I mean, it was becoming greater and greater within me. But when we, well, that when we challenge, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, as you were speaking about that inner conflict, getting agitated, and I'm sure with the story that I read, that would be very tough. So go. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, all of us seem to have a half a dozen or a dozen of those kinds of experiences when we actually go back and we think about them. And we know which ones they are because they're the ones that uh, trigger us emotionally. Uh, right. Maybe when we start to talk about them, you know, we get angry or we talk about something else, we become sad or, you know, kind of ang anxious, anxiety, depressed or whatever. So we know when we think about those certain experiences in life that we haven't resolved because they, they draw up these negative emotions. So in the hypnotherapy processes, we want to go in and clear those up. We want to desensitize them. Uh, we want to alter the perceptions of the memories in correct ways. We call it having people come to understand their personal truths about those situations. And when they do, those emotions collapse just like my anger did. And as we help people through hypnotherapy clear up, you know, a half a dozen, dozen of those layers, as we call them. Everybody in therapy wants to talk about peeling the onion, you know. As we peel that back, clear those up, then, then people can really be taught these uh, mind management principles and enact them for themselves. And so one of the tests of it is, is if you read the book, you follow the directions there. If you're having a hard time doing it, it's generally, it's always because somebody has some of these fixation experiences that they need to have freed up. And as soon as they are and they've come to resolve of those things, then they can actually feel that and get the benefit of everything that we're talking about. And they, they can go through this process with the information that's in that your book, Spiritual Mind Management. They can, yes. That's super. Yeah, so it's all, yeah, it's all explained in there. And then the other the other thing that would help them, and that's why we also made such a kind of a full-length video, if you will, 
is uh, the book, and then it, the, to actually see it done and to help them understand it, you can go back to the website again at certifiedhypnotherapytrainingschool.com and uh, and uh, go to the YouTube links, or just go to YouTube and look it up under W. Dennis Parker, and you can uh, right. find that spiritual mind management video and watch it being done as well. So between the book and the video, absolutely, they can get you know a great benefit. And you're you're doing uh, your your work over the phone too. I, I asked you that so people can get on Skype with you and and work with you. Uh, yes, I do uh, individual sessions. We do some group sessions over Skype and over the internet. And then I have a group internet, like a go to meeting kind of program. I use a different kind of a deal, but something like that. You know, a, a webinar system that yes. we also will hold hold meetings and so on. And help people. And so people even like for corporate, your, yes, people can go to your website and sign up for these. Uh, yes. Yep. Give me a call and we'll set things up, or or send me an email. All of the information's on the site. They can send me an email. And we'll set up a block of sessions with them and help them through those things. And you said that you went through six sessions, and. With some of the, I'm curious about you. You 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 shared with me that you work with ADD, ADHD, and you have results with that with your program. Is that spiritual mind management you're working there, or hypnosis and that together? Uh, that's that's a well. There's there's we we've, we've put the spiritual mind management in a hypnotherapy protocol. So. In the school, what we do is we teach the three basic forms of hypnotherapy, as we call it now. The first form of hypnotherapy is what's called suggestion hypnotherapy, and that's what 80 to 85, 90 percent of all the hypnotherapists out there are doing. They induce a level of trance, and then they want to get critical factor bypass, so they're attempting to establish a more predominant thought in the subconscious belief system than the one that's there, because we all act out our most predominant thoughts. So in yes. trance, it does, it does make us a little more hyper-suggestible, those types of things. And so then a person will read them a metaphor, story, affirmation, script, that kind of thing, guided imagery. All of those things are what I'm calling suggestion hypnotherapy, and that's the way we teach that in the school. Clinical hypnotherapy is a little more involved than that. Clinical hypnotherapy in our school is what we call age regression work, gestalt work. Uh, parts work, uh, inner child kind of work, and pain control. So mm -hmm. those those things are what we're calling clinical hypnotherapy. And then the spiritual mm -hmm. mind management hypnotherapy is the application, use, and understanding of these spiritual mind principles that really cap all of that off and cement it all together in a way that the person becomes uh, really totally independent, uh, self-functioning, uh, very uh, self-capable, if you will. And so, for example, uh, we work uh, a lot with pain, as I said. And one of the great things about this is, is that people can be taught how to use their mind to uh, detach from pain and control pain. And so we do actually, uh, you know, a very good job with, like, migraine pain and and uh, those types of things, and we teach people, you know, as long as there's no organic pathology there and they know they've been checked and it's a psychosomatically induced pain and emotional pain, which uh, which a lot of it is. I mean, in fact, most of it is. Then we right. can teach them how to shut down their imagination again in these negative ways. We teach them how to alter the perception of whatever's going on that's causing them the emotional pain. That collapses the emotional content again, and now the pain just vanishes and goes away. Very good. And and so, how how many sessions is a, is there like a, a number of sessions that are is sort of the standard as a foundation? You said you went to six sessions yourself, and then yeah, we it's it, pretty standard to help people clear up their fixations and to get a good uh, a good foundation going. It depends, again, on the age of the person, how many experiences they've had, how much abuse they may have experienced. You know, it's, it's hard to say because it depends, again, on how many layers or fill the onion kinds of things you you got to go through. But most, most folks can get through that in, 
you know, six to six to eight two-hour sessions. Six uh, to eight two-hour sessions. Yeah, sometimes cool, we do hours. Yes. What's yes. that? I'm sorry to interrupt, but you have a caller I'm from um, area code uh, 310. Um, I'm not sure if they want to talk to the caller. You're on with Bart Smite and uh, uh, Dennis Parker. Welcome. Who are we talking to? The caller, Hello. are you there? Or maybe yeah, they just just... maybe they want Hello. to listen. Caller, oh, very close to your phone. I guess they're just listening. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, thank you very much. Okay, welcome. So yeah, so six to eight two-hour sessions. I mean, uh, for the level of work that you're getting done, that's uh, that sounds fantastic. I mean, it's, it sounds like a very uh, like you've got a very wide approach to cover and make sure that all bases are covered, as we'd say. So people are, yeah, yeah. are not. But. Yeah, and depending on their schedule, I mean, we, we can do a one-hour session, hour and a half session, or two-hour sessions. But if you want kind of a of a average where people get it all done, they clear up all of their past fixations, and they learn the spiritual mind management sessions for sure. Virtually every time we're done in six, maybe eight, eight two-hour sessions. And for somebody, if somebody was going to come to your school and learn how to do this, what's your curricular? How long is that? Is it broken up into weekends? Is it? Uh, can you fill us, fill our listeners know that? Yes, we have uh, two schedules. We do a couple of accelerated schedules a year, where it's uh, during the daytime, uh, nine to five generally, uh, six straight weeks, that uh, kind of thing. And then we have uh, two or three uh, series at night where we usually run on a Thursday night, Friday night, and Saturday morning schedule uh, where it takes about three months at that pace to get through it. We certify through ACHE or the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners, which is one of the largest certifying organizations in the country. It's recognized in all 50 of the United States and 21 other countries. Okay. And how, how you know that that your certificate is legitimate and that, that you're really getting involved in a program that's going to work for you is, is do underwriting insurance companies actually underwrite your certificate and will they give you professional malpractice insurance against your certificate? And okay. that's, something, that's something that people want to know about if they're going to be a a certified hypnotherapist, they want to make sure that their certificates are valid and that they're considered legitimate, they're getting the right training, they're getting the professional clinical training that they need to be effective. And then that, and then that the insurance companies will actually acknowledge that and be willing to write policies for them, and of which, of course, we do and can get and that kind of thing. I have a question here, if you wouldn't mind, um, Dennis. Um, uh, this is Deanne. I just want to ask you, um, people out there have a hard time dealing with addiction, you know, whether it might be um, anything. I wanted to find out what you think. Um, does this work for addiction? Well, um, you know, and I, and I have to be careful with that answer, so let me answer you this way. And the reason I have to be careful is, is that because in the state of Utah where I'm at, uh, they, you know, through the legislation here, they've legislated what different uh, job titles and classifications can do. So in the state of Utah, you have to be a licensed addictions counselor to work with uh, bona fide diagnosed addi addictions. So in hypnotherapy does not uh, qualify in that area of, of addiction counseling, so to speak. So the answer to that is is that, no, I don't work with it directly, but we do work with it indirectly all the time, and yes, it's very effective, but the way we work with those kinds of issues, and that's the same with mental illness. In the state of Utah, hypnotherapists, we do not work with diagnosed mental illness or drug and alcoholism or, or street drug addictions kinds of things. 
But that being said, the way we do work with it is, is that we do work with it in conjunction with their medical practitioner. So whoever the doctor is that's prescribing the meds, if they're on mind-altering drugs, we require that we get a prescription from them and we let them know what we're doing and they let, and we do it as a joint venture at that point because there's so many behavioral modifications that we can affect in that area. So for example, we affect uh, you know them eating right, we help them overcome their sleep problems so they're sleeping better, uh, we help them with their weight loss and those types of things. And so we're prompting and promoting on a behavioral level all of those things that everybody acknowledges makes you feel better and, ha and puts you in a better mental state. So we work in conjunction with them. Um, if they're really fully diagnosed with schizophrenia or alcoholism or, you know, bipolar, those kinds of things, we don't, uh, we don't go those things alone. We do that in conjunction with if we get involved at all with that. But that still leaves about 90% of the population out there who still is having just a problem sleeping or has anger issues or other behavioral issues, you know, that, that we work with on a regular basis. And he asked the end? Did that, did that answer that? Or? Yeah, that answered real well. I just was curious, um, you know, about that. Uh, and it's interesting, too, that there are, you know, designated laws like that. Is that just in Utah, or is that in every state those laws apply? You know, over time, that's gotten to be fairly standard. Um, it, you know, the, uh, the psychiatrists are, by law, able to do certain things. The psychologists, by law, are able to do certain things. Uh, the uh, licensed social workers are allowed to do certain things kind of thing. And, and the hypnotherapist can do certain things. Massage therapists are only allowed to do certain things. It kind of siloed everybody, if you will, uh, to some degree by, by the legislators. So, but we do, uh, we do a lot in our field. I was mentioning uh, children. You asked me about that. One of the new technologies that we're developing uh, with kids is a non-medical um, alternative uh, for ADD and ADHD. And what we've learned about children is, is that uh, most children, along with the rest of the natural somnambulist population out there, uh, what, what, where people get confused a lot about hypnosis, and some people want to be concerned about, you know, mind control and all that that's demonstrated, so to speak, by stage hypnotists. What's going on there is, is that this fifth level of trance down and is, and again, it's explained on the website and in the video, called somnambulism. A natural somnambulist is what the dictionary defines as a sleepwalker. And there's a whole population out there of folks who are walking around in a chronic state of trance and don't even know it. Those are the people that stage hypnotists are preying upon to perform the stage show because they're highly vulnerable to suggestion. They allow everybody's opinion to mean more to them than their own. And uh, they are the ones who will get up and, you know, do the silly, you know, kind of goofy stage antics and, and uh, allow the stage hypnotist to present the show in a way that it looks like none and none of these people are now in my power, which is the entertainment value of the show. Just like a stage magician, you know, is going to uh, have rabbits come out of a hat and pigeons come out of thin air. And it, the illusionary factor of it is what, is what has the entertainment value to it. But little kids, when we were all small, we were all natural somnambulists. In other words, every one of us were naturally highly off in our imagination. We were highly vulnerable to suggestion. And that's why most of the situations that we go back and correct in hypnotherapy really go back to childhood because we didn't have a, a developed critical factor. This filter between the two minds was really not well established until somewhere between the years of 7 and 10. Back. But there's a, whole pop, there's a whole population out there who experienced some kind of trauma in those younger years or had some types of experiences where they never really did fully develop their critical factor. And so that population is still walking around in a chronic state of trance. And those are the people that we dehypnotize, we don't hypnotize. And the truth of it is, is I'm just as much or sometimes even more of a dehypnotist than I am a hypnotist. 
this natural somnambulistic population is the ones that's having a lot of behavioral problems and issues because, again, they're not fully functioning uh, in their own critical thinking, and they end up having a lot of behavioral issues. And so when they come in, uh, we're dehypnotizing that population and bringing them back to full consciousness. It's an amazing work. And when they finally become fully conscious, it's just fascinating because it's like you just birthed an adult. I mean, <laughs> they, finally, they finally come full functioning, look around at the world and go, oh, my gosh. And they'll describe it as though they just came out from behind a, a fog or a cloud or you know, and they really uh, get to experience what it's like to live in the current moment in time. And little children, that's where I was going with the ADHD thing. We're teaching that same concept to little kids now so that they can get fully conscious because when, they're, when their intelligence is in consciousness, and this is the main, one of the main premises in the book, in fact, it's on the back cover, one of the main premises of the book is, that, is to teach people that when your intelligence is ahead of the critical factor, and it's in consciousness. You're not now back in the subconscious of imaginations, memories, and emotions. It's as though they don't even exist. And so when you teach children to get fully forward conscious and teach them how to get out of their subconscious, uh, all of a sudden they go quiet. They uh, can focus on the lessons at hand. They can watch the blackboard. They can pay attention to the teacher. And they learn at an amazing rate, and they shut off, if you will, they disconnected from all of those other thoughts and problems in the back of their mind that's actually causing all of that ab reacting, uh, which is the fidgeting and I can't sit still and that bouncing off the walls kind of feeling that they have because now you teach them to disconnect from that the same way we teach people to disconnect from pain and other things. Excellent. Well, this yeah, is, uh, no, I was just going to say, it's, it's it's fun work. I love what I do. I love what I get to do. I love to see all the changes in people and, the, you know, the positive effects that this stuff is having. It's amazing. Well, I imagine you're one of those birthed adults. You did that for yourself, too, coming out of all those traumas and uh, years of anger and frustration, right? That's right. That's why I understand it so well. I had the same experience with other pathways, and I, I, it's really great to hear you talk about this because uh, it's just nice to connect with somebody who's had that because when you've had that, it's it's an amazing experience. Yeah, and, be, it's, and, it, becomes, yeah, and it becomes one that you want to share and help other people with and your family and loved ones and others, you know, and... So now we've, we've kind of launched this as an effort to teach as many people as we can and just help as many people as we can. And So that's why we're attempting to get on radio shows and do things like your show and appreciate you giving us this opportunity to at least express these things and let people know that there are, there are other things that they can do besides stay miserable and, and cooped up inside their own minds and emotions, so to speak. And, I, you know, I think it's so important that just the basic uh, workings of the mind that you're talking about and brain and the critical factor when uh, these points are, you know, along my path of uh, my training and, and my uh, experience, when I learned about that uh, period from 7 to 10 when we actually cannot begin separating our identification from what's happening to us to... Uh, who we are in relationship to what's happening with you. Does that sound good to you? Yeah. Yeah, and and it's, it, it's where... Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, what, the first time I got that bit of knowledge just uh, being told to me that at that period, then I could... I started searching those uh, moments and times prior to that, and it helped me with my process. Just the simple mechanics. Because these are important facts that people aren't given in school. So this is, this is great that you're sharing this. And, uh, that book of your spiritual mind management sounds very good. And we can get that on Amazon? You can. You can get it on Amazon, again, in both a hard copy or a uh, Kindle version. And, uh, and then I also have a website called Spiritual Mind Management. You can go look at it there if you want. There's a little write-up on the 
authors there, and the three of us that you know co-authored that. And then there's right. also uh, yeah, and then there's also again the the school website with all kinds of information available to educate the public on hypnosis, hypnotherapy, spiritual mind management. If they want to qualify and become a hypnotherapist and learn these principles. What else is cool? What's going on is that we're starting to have more and more uh, parents and grandparents actually just check into the training because they want to know how to work with their own children and grandkids uh, that are having problems. So uh, when you talk about these addiction issues that I don't necessarily work directly with as a hypnotherapist, there's nothing that says uh, parents and grandparents can't take these same concepts and principles and work with people in their own family. And a lot nice. of these. Uh, a lot of these addiction and counseling programs are expensive. I mean, they they put these kids in programs for months, and it's tens and tens of thousands of dollars. And yet, yeah, for, uh, well, yeah, and so for you know just a, a three four thousand dollars, they can come into my program, and they can learn all of the same clinical skills. They can learn the spiritual mind management skills, and they can work with all of their kids and their family for a fraction of what they could ever send somebody into rehab for. So we think we're offering like the best value, best uh, option, if you will, uh, on the planet for for families and people who want to learn how to, you know, do these kinds of things and help others. Right. Yeah, and I have a I have a question. Um, this is Denise. Um, are you able to do your courses like you were saying? I know you're going to have the uh, go to meeting, but if people can't actually travel to Utah, um, do you have online courses? Yes, we do, and I, I appreciate you asking that question because I, I would have forgotten it, but we broadcast <laughs> all the classes. So we broadcast them live from Farmington. So while we do have some students in the classroom, uh, we'll have uh, uh, more usually online from all over the country and really uh, anywhere on the online classes and it's fully interactive. So we see uh, the, the students that are online on the big screen TV. They can talk to the group in the class. They can talk to me. Uh, we verbalize back and forth. Everybody can see them. They can see us. And it really works well. And so the answer to that is yes. We can, we can teach people really anywhere that the internet is working well on the online courses. So, I have so a, when you're, I, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. I just want to. Um, so when you're done with us, then if we if we go ahead and take the the course that we want to actually do this as a profession or to help our families that sort of thing. So we're we're basically able to pe put people in trances and do the whole thing. Yes, you are, and we teach you we teach you the exact same clinical skills that we teach the the clinical hypnotherapist. Now we have a. We have what we call a non-certifying program for parents and grandparents. So these are there's lots of folks out there that they, they don't want to set up a hypnotherapy clinic, but they'd like to know how to help their own family members and frankly save some money from a lot of these other more expensive long-term programs because what we do is so quick and so surgical in the sense that we go right into the subconscious. We kind of go right to the root of the issue and deal with roots, as we say, and pull them out kind of thing. But we, we actually, we've offered that to parents and grandparents at even a 40% discount over what a, a certifying person would pay. So we, we're really just wanting to help families and parents and, and have made it as economical as we can. Uh, so if, the, if you go on the website, it's there as well as a 40% discount option for non-certifying students. Just meaning that anybody that wants to learn it but they don't plan on setting up a practice, if they're a counselor or they're a social worker, those kind of things, and we know they're going to use it to make money, then we expect them to, you know, kind of pay the fee like anybody else. But for, for just parents, grandparents, people want to just learn it to know it. And we include executives, supervisors, managers, other people who just want to know how to be the change agent in their organization and understand behaviors and know how to affect uh, behavioral change across the organizations and stuff, they can also go in and take it at that 40% reduced rate. Anybody that's not actually in the counseling business or isn't going to go out and be a, you know, a clinical hypnotherapist kind of thing. So in that way, we feel, again, we're helping everybody in the public as best we can. 
Excellent. That sounds, yeah, excellent. Well, I, I have a question for you um, uh, because uh, you're talking about uh, the high cost of clinical addictions uh, counseling and stuff. Um, over here, I do uh, a lot of work with electronic uh, and digital addiction, and I'm wondering if you involved with that computer game. Oh yeah, <clears throat> yeah. It's 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 a problem again because it, it's destroying families and marriages and so on. I mean, I have a good friend who's, you know, uh, her husband comes home every night from work, eats his supper, and then goes downstairs and locks himself in his basement office or something and plays video games with people online all over the country and stuff until 2 or 3 in the morning. He can already walk. He crawls up to bed, goes to bed for a few hours, goes to work, comes home at night, plays video games. And uh, totally ignoring his family, ignoring his children, ignoring his wife, and he's all hung up on this, uh, what you know, whatever he's doing down there. And uh, yeah. and people get hung up in these life and time wasting events, and and you know that's absolutely we work with that kind of stuff all the time. Great. And um, I have another question. Uh, uh -huh. Here in here in Sweden. Uh, a uh, scientist has just done a, they did a double blind test, as it were, where they uh, they were doing um, IQ testing, and yeah. they had children walk in with uh, cell phones in their pockets, and the children who had the cell phone in their pockets, the testers didn't know, and the interviewers didn't know on the testing, and uh, the cell phone actually, the children with the cell phones all tested lower. Have you been running into the, the, the frequency problems over there? Cell you phones, know what? Cell phones. I, I, yeah, I, I was not aware of your test and the results, but it doesn't surprise me. The, the problem that I see with, with kids, and of course, again, I'm a family oriented person, you know, with my 11 kids now, they're all grown and I have 35 grandkids, so I'm very interested in what's going on with children and what's out there, but the, the problem I see is is that we've raised a whole generation and we're almost on our second generation of what I call adrenaline junkies. I mean, these kids have been raised with so much uh, media, uh, there's not an explosion big enough now to stimulate them anymore, they're all desensitized. There's not a car race fast enough. You can't kill enough people in one movie to uh, to sensitize them anymore kind of thing. And uh, they have not been taught how to live quietly and peacefully in their own mind. And when you talk about, you know, having a peaceful mind to them, they have no comprehension of it. As soon as their adrenaline shuts off, uh, the kids around here and, you know, about everywhere I go, they want to use the B word. It's boring. And they, instead of uh, appreciating uh, quiet and peace and allow their body the time to heal, to rejuvenate, to mend, to detox in a quiet, peaceful state and maintain their health, uh, they're yeah. so, uh, that's the biggest addiction I think that's out there is the, the adrenaline addiction. And we absolutely work with that. I mean, we're not talking street drugs or alcoholism, you know. And so the addiction that I want to help, if we can call out an addiction, um, I, we call them maladaptive behaviors for the most part, but, but it's, it's that. It would be to help people learn to live quietly and peacefully in their own minds nowadays because that's the root of uh, most all of the sleep disorders and so on that's going on out there as well. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. Is, uh, you want to go ahead and give us another... Uh advertisement for your school website and the book and how people can get in touch with you? Sure, I appreciate that very much. Uh, they can go again to certifiedhypnotherapytrainingschool.com and uh, check that out. Uh, feel free to give me a call and talk to me about any uh, finance options or attendance options or online options that you would like to discuss and I'll be happy to explain how all those work. Uh, buy the book from Amazon.com if you'd like a hard copy or a Kindle version is there. Uh, and then if you want to uh, do some uh, sessions of hypnotherapy and so on, you can also uh, contact me through the school website. 
um, all my contact information is there, and we will uh, get back with you and, and set up a series of sessions with you and and uh, help you through uh, whatever it is that you want to work on. Well, thank you very much, Dennis. I really appreciate what you're doing, and I, uh, I'm very interested in your programs, and I'll be uh, contacting you myself uh, to uh, just share and, and see what's see what more is available. And Denise? Yeah, great. I'll look, I'll look forward to that. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you, Dennis. Thank you so much. Excellent information. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm great. Glad you enjoyed it, and I appreciate you hearing me out. So thank you. Right on. Okay. Great job. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Okay. Good night. Good night. We'll be in touch. All right. Awesome. Well, well, oh, that was good, good, good information, Bart. Really good. He was a great guest, um, and uh, I think maybe you know we could talk a little bit about some of the work that you do to help along with that. Can you imagine combining the both the systems together? The energetic. Well, that's actually, with, that's with actually that? what I want to talk to him about because everything he's talking about is. Um, I, I can see that uh, they've got an approach that I'd be very curious to blend with what I do, and uh, it just for me, it's uh, it's nice to hear somebody's put together a program out there as he has, and and really being uh, a, able to address the family being in-house responsible and active and proactive and get results with their loved ones. I mean, <clears throat> so many people nowadays, you know, I know that just because of all the family systems therapies and, you know, you and I have uh, uh, discussed many times the different programs and, and uh, that are available and developing in the nation, but you have something that uh, people can actually become efficient and, and get the results within their own family uh, and make grandma and grandpa effective again, right? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I'm a grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are so, a grandfather. Yeah, I am. And uh, boy, the the challenges they're coming up with, and I love the way Dennis said it. It's, it's adrenaline junkies, and boring is the uh, easy word. That's you know, here in Sweden, I tell you, it's uh, it's if the parents aren't active with the children in their sport. The beaches are empty. There's a lot less kids playing football, musical instruments. They're just really falling to the uh, prey of the video game and the instant rush. And in my own family, uh, we're, we have been faced with this issue too, and we're getting through it. But uh, this sounds great. Ian, yes. nice choice. I want to thank her for assisting us to bring Dennis on. And uh, again, Dennis, if you're still listening or you hear this, thank you. And, uh, and then as far as what we do, I mean, what we're doing, we're, everything that they're talking about with the work we do, we go direct to the subconscious too. And, and, uh, but I like to work consciously as Dennis does, and that's what I've developed. I've actually, he was talking about clear mind. I, I developed my clear mind, free heart uh, series of trainings just absolutely everything he was saying is what happens what we clear in, in the courses I do and I, again his technology I think would be a great great uh, blend with what uh, I do uh, we do at the uh, Yarbo Academy and the modern day shaman so it's just it's thrilling to me to, to be part of well, this I'm and, glad and, to hear that Bart yeah. that's great really great yeah yeah it is it's uh, it's uh, the work we do is you know everything that he's talking about can be effective very quick and to have people be empowered you know I use martial arts and, and Qigong training and that people get that on my program and I'm gonna get his book and read it but really, it's learning how to be able to discern 
what's happening in your body and your mind and your energy and uh, yeah, to be in control of that too. You can't be in control of all the impulses, but impulses don't have a place to land once the memories and the imaginations are gone like he's talking about. You know, I know it and uh, Deanne, you, you witnessed some of the work even with your family, do you, that these things can change very quickly. Yeah, and, so. and, yeah, and the thing is, too, um, you know, you get to a point in life, you know, like you said, it, eventually the movie stops. You know? So you, you have to, you know, uh, be able to deal with your mind and your, your body, and it comes as one. But, you know, when you are going through so many different pressures and things and um, media pushing you one direction and the other and um, you just uh, you, you become lost in your own mind and your body and if there's something like this that can you know generate um, you know a positive energy I think it's really is great and I think it does you know um, you know work well with what you're doing here on the show yeah yeah and, and you know Dennis came from a place of very big challenges I read his uh, thing on the website and and you know to be free of, of these type of things and to have a productive life is uh, you know that's what we all want so exactly and and I want to do a quick shout out here um, we want to remind everybody that Bart is going to be doing a free remote online healing so you can actually get a taste of his his energetic work, and that's going to be Sunday uh, tomorrow. And um, if you go to our website at www.amoderndayshaman.net and sign up on the front page for for the free online healing, we'll send you the link. And um, I, I encourage everybody to jump on that because what he teaches and what he does is amazing. So um, I just wanted to let everybody know about that because I know we're getting close to the end of the show. Thank you. And uh, tomorrow night, uh, as I, I actually asked Dennis in, the, in our pre-talk because uh, because of my Qigong and Tai Chi and, and other uh, martial arts background, in, in my group sessions, that's what I'm doing with people too. I, I'm training people as we work. So when you come on to these, you're going to be accessing um, uh, focus, exercises, and uh, the ability to use your mind to assist yourself uh, that's based on different Taoist practices, Qigong breathing, uh, different centers, and, and uh, these tools you'll take with you. So. Right, well, and, also, and also tell your friends, if anybody's in pain, tell your friends to... Uh, Sign up and get on the on the free healing, and Bart will take the pain away. Well, we'll take the pain away. <laughs> That's right. We'll take the pain away. Yeah. We'll, we we work together. That's the power of the group too. You know, it's uh, the, the groups get more powerful, more people, more energy, and yes, welcome, and we'll do our best. Well, thank you. Uh, another great show. Great, great uh, to have you again, Denise, out there in windy uh, Las Vegas, and Deanna, I guess you're in Chicago. Thank you, and uh, I'm saying good night here from Sweden. It's wonderful to be with you all tonight. Thank you. Okay, good night. Bye-bye. Good night.